Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is GYAS. So in this video we will be discussing the important editorials of the Hindu of 25 May 2019. So friends in this video what we will do we will analyze your editorials and before starting uh, your editorials let me tell you that uh, I will just uh, provide you the crux of the editorial because my purpose here is to just uh, give you a perspective and not to kind of uh, dictate each and everything that is given there in the editorial because uh, self reading is very important so my purpose is only to guide you people so let's see what is the first article so they, uh, so in today's uh, uh, newspaper there are only two articles that are of relevance and the first article is about uh, uh, the task that the new government that is the NDA2 government has to uh, kind of uh, uh, task that are before it that, uh, that it must must proceed with so as to take the economy on a positive note so let's see what the article says so basically uh, it has uh, highlighted important points so you must know it so it is very important article because uh, uh, it can give you a general idea on uh, on the issues that are facing uh, the indian economy or for that matter in uh, uh, completely the indian scenario that whether it is politically institutionally or economically or societally so so uh, uh, the article is not that much comprehensive but it certainly gives you the idea so here uh, the author says that uh, it uh, the time uh, is here that uh, the previous reform measures are more strengthened and there must also be renewed focus on infrastructure housing technology health education water and environment so these are important issues so if you are reading the nindu newspaper or the, for that matter any newspaper then these are the issues that frequently frequently uh, figure in in the news so infrastructure is very important housing for all because we have a kind of target for providing housing to all people by 2020 20s, uh, 2022 similarly we have a kind of task to upgrade our technology whether for defense purposes for our, whether for our uh, economy needs or for any other matter and uh, health education as well as water and environment so here author also says that uh, the focus must also be uh, that uh, the agricultural jobs uh, uh, must be reduced for that uh, it, that is to say the people depending it is it, they should not be reduced but the people depending on them must be reduced they must be kind of uh, uh, channelized to other uh, sectors so that the burden on the agriculture sector could be reduced so uh, as the data suggests that only 23% of rural income now comes from farming so uh, but the uh, the people that are uh, engaged in agriculture uh, or, or in farming they are quite large and it demands kind of moving away these uh, uh, people from these agricultural jobs to other sectors so also the need of the R is about police and judicial reforms and also the direct benefit transfer so you know about direct benefit transfers through which the government transfers of various kinds of subsidies and ca cash transfers uh, ca uh, cash uh, support that the government provides to under under its various government schemes so the author says it is uh, necessary that DBT must be uh, strengthened more so that the delays in payments could be reduced and other thing uh, the author suggests is to tackling the slow job growth in fact this was the issue of uh, 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 this was the kind of uh, uh, major uh, setback uh, it could be that the major uh, kind of we can say uh, a, a mess of uh, NDA one government because there was not much job growth during during the first phase uh, during this uh, uh, previous phase of NDA government and uh, uh, there were also some other political analysts who were saying that uh, that the, the slow job growth growth and unemployment could uh, uh, could bring down the NDA government but this doesn't didn't happen but and but the government certainly should focus now to increase the job growth in, in, and in similar manner the there is a talk of uh, uh, revitalization of banking sector so you might know that uh, that uh, non performing assets are a big issue so from 2011 uh, npas are rising and uh, there is a liquidity crunch for, for which credit growth is not taking place and also private investment is not uh, not taking place so here uh, the author uh, emphasizes the need to revitalize banking sector so already nda1 government had taken various uh, governance reform measures to revitalize this uh, ailing banking sector as well as to ensure liquidity so that the credit growth and private investment could pick up but the private investment did not pick up because uh, uh, the, the uh, though rbi tried its best and government tried its best but the banks were uh, reluctant to to uh, kind of lend uh, 
uh, the money uh, at at lower interest uh, uh, and uh, the asset quality of uh, uh, private players was not that much good so uh, uh, these private ba uh, these banks resisted to lend and now it ma uh, the government must ensure that this this doesn't happen again uh, there must be appropriate uh, private investment so that the uh, growth uh, uh, the virtuous cycle of growth and uh, employment generation could take place and also uh, there is a need to revive uh, non banking financial companies so a question might come in your mind that uh, what are non banking financial companies so let me tell you friends that in simple words it is a company which uh, provides some of the services of banking sector but not all and uh, it is not regulated by completely by rbi but uh, there are certain regulations so complete regulation is not there so they are not full fledged banking institutions but they uh, they do play an important role in this in the banking sector uh, in the lending sector so they lend money so uh, there is much need of non banking financial companies being revived so that to ensure the high consumption growth and also currently they are not lending because they are preferring to sit over fat liquidity cushion than than to lend uh, because they don't have enough liquidity so in this context uh, uh, the rbi is also not willing to provide its uh, it a special liquidity window but this author suggests that there must be a special liquidity window uh, though the government can keep uh, high collateral as well as high interest rate uh, to, uh, uh, in order if if the if the non banking financial companies want to avail uh, liquidity under this special liquidity window so the author says that the uh, the reason behind this uh, is that uh, the, the, this high interest and uh, uh, high uh, collateral uh, uh, kind of available thing it will ensure that uh, that the this uh, special liquidity window is used rarely but but this will ensure that nbfcs will have the choice uh, to ensure the liquidity to uh, to may, uh, to uh, to ensure that uh, they they are not uh, uh, they do, they don't have any dearth of uh, provisions so in this context uh, this will ensure that the nbfcs will prefer to lend but now they are not lending because they don't have any alternative or uh, uh, thing that can ensure their liquidity but this will ensure that uh, they they in in case of extreme stress they can uh, they can ensure uh, the liquidity uh, they can they can have uh, they, they will have a choice for liquidity so also author says that they, uh, due to gst there was an, an increase in tax base and also simplification of tax uh, happened and also there was a kind of uh, uh, cuts in rate taxes in the rates of uh, taxes and this uh, but the in, uh, tax base has increased and the uh, resources and revenue of the government is expected to rise but it must be ensured that it must be used prudently and focus must also be on inclusive as well as moderate progressive stances rather than bold uh, certainly bold decisions are needed but uh, uh, the, uh, it is not uh, that uh, we must uh, we, we we should ignore any sector uh, section of society so the focus must be on inclusive growth and also the author in in, in the end highlights that institutional autonomy is very important for new india so the institutions like rbi and other institutions also so should remain independent and then only the economy can revive so this is all about this article let's move on to the next article so next article is about uh the election commission's role in this uh, lok sabha elections and uh, here uh, the author is basically a former election commissioner uh, uh, chief election commissioner s y qureshi so he highlights uh, the important things of this uh, general elections and the uh, the role that was expected from election commission and how it fared in it and what are the necessary changes so let's see so articles basically crux is that lok sabha elections were concluded successfully and certainly the uh, the election machinery and election commission and 12 minal Million election personnel, which were engaged in this practice, they certainly need appreciation because this was the election of world's largest democracy. So, in fact, voter turnout was very high. So that is 67.11 percent. So, it was the highest ever turnout. So, uh, uh, with every general election, the voter turnout is increasing. And elections were held in seven phases. And um, uh, MCC, that is Model Code of Conduct, was operational uh, for a, for a quite for quite a long time. So, in this context, the author highlights that. Uh, due to the age, in the age of social media when uh, there are there is a rise in social networking sites like whatsapp facebook twitter and uh, any uh, other like instagram and other uh, uh, social media websites also uh, this uh, the to ensure the full implementation of model code of conduct certainly is a big and uh, big task for election commission because it could not ensure uh, 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 that uh, mcc could be implemented effectively uh, but certainly uh, the, it is the issue that author suggests that election commission must 
focus on uh, in uh, during this uh, 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 this break that that is available to it so so that uh, the uh, the model code of conduct could be implemented properly so in this context also the author suggests that there must be a proper cost benefit analysis of short phase and multi phase elections because uh, 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 multi in multi phase elections model code of conduct remains operational for quite for quite a long time so it becomes obviously difficult uh, for for an institution run by human beings to to uh, to ensure that uh, the mcc is fully implemented but the here the major concern that author itself recognizes and it is the major concern of election commission also the uh, is is the concern of voter safety so that no violence takes place and it is a prime concern so and also there is other issue that is power city of uh, central armed police forces personnel which can be which 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 uh, which are uh, uh, posted in at dif uh, in different places at different times and uh, there are not mu enough uh, personnel uh, so that the elections could be conducted in a single phase or for that matter in short phase so also but these were the uh, general issues but uh, the author also wrote about the specific controversies in which uh, election commission was in, uh, was kind of uh, 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 in which election commission's image was kind of we can say declined so there was a role of money media and mafia so certainly here the election commission has no role in fact and uh, uh, certainly if but but author wants to highlight that there was enough use of money media and mafia uh, money uh, uh, that is assets for 3470 uh, 34 uh, 175 crore rupees worth of money drugs and narcotics and other precious metals were seized as on 24 may 2009 so the, it is quite a large amount so also other uh, the issue that uh, that uh, demands attention is that uh, election commission was uh, criticized nationally as well as internationally for its delayed response and uh, its uh, quick actions to uh, cases pertaining to violation of model code of conduct so the author wants to say uh, the, the 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 response of the election commission was delayed and also it was not well thought out so also other thing that the author uh, pointed to is that is the is the incident of uh, uh, checking of prime minister's helicopter in which the checking officer was uh, was kind of uh, uh, he was suspended so uh, the author said that uh, the, uh, this was the incident incident in which election co uh, commission could have proved its uh, free and impartial role but uh, election commission uh, uh, responded in a contra uh, uh, responded contrary to what was expected from it and it suspended the checking uh, the checking uh, the person who checked the prime minister's helicopter so another thing is that of uh, the vb pad counting so uh, the uh, basically the practice is now that uh, uh, in each assembly constituency one evm is taken and uh, and its evm uh, votes elect uh, electronic votes and its vv packs are matched so uh, here the parties were suggesting that uh, uh, at least there must be five uh, five, uh, five vv, uh, VV packs that must be matched with evms so that uh, uh, there could be increase in confidence and credibility of electoral process and also supreme court also suggested this but uh, election commission was on defensive in uh, on this suggestion other thing also which the opposition suggested was was that uh, in case of uh, mismatch in even one of the evms uh, there must be complete counting of uh, uh, the complete matching of vv vv pads with the electronic votes the, uh, in the evms uh, in the whole entire assembly constituency but the election commission clearly rejected this demand but the author says that this demand was worthy of consideration and also uh, uh, here the author says that election commission has also been accused of being uh, uh, soft on the on the uh, uh, on the current government's leadership for example prime minister and uh, and and his party president so here uh, the author says that dissent is very important it because it is life and blood of democracy and uh, an institutional uh, an institution's credibility and confidence can only be, uh, can only be uh, built if if it it gives a role uh, it uh, kind of importance to dissent but here uh, uh, it it uh, it it gave six clean chits or five clean chits to the uh, prime minister and his party president and also uh, the, the demand of the election commissioner who was uh, Uh, was uh, was against giving the clean chits uh, his demand that uh, his dissenting note must be made public um, uh, was not accepted by election commission so this uh, this the author criticizes that this must not have uh, uh, this, this must not have happened because uh, the dissenting note must be a part of uh, of uh, uh, this uh, 
entire notice so here author uh, in the end highlights that there is ascendancy of paid and fake news so this was a uh, very much uh, bigger problem so paid and fake news uh, were there and there were criminal polariz polarization of indian society and there was also hate rhetoric so in this context author in the end concludes that uh, the indian democracy is based on uh, uh, just on uh, not in the procedure of uh, of uh, elections it is also based on the credibility of elections and the integrity of elections commission so it is not just enough that we uh, we are the world's largest democracy and we conduct the world's largest elections but our elections must also be the world's greatest elections so in this context the author suggests that uh, the 7th 17th lok sabha which has recently formed it must look uh, into the issues uh, uh, so that the election commission could be uh, could be made robust and uh, robust and also must be given some teeth and uh, so that it can ensure it, it can uh, fulfill its obligations in a in a considerable manner so this the, these are the two articles of discussion friends so this is all about our today's video if you liked it please like it share it with your friends and also friends we have a dedicated test series for 2020 uh, aspirants who are preparing for the 2020 csc so we have a year long plan if you are interested to join our test series then you can contact us at this uh, phone number that is 8968426481 or at this email id that is chyas21@gmail.com so this is our telegram channel so you can also join it so this is all about friends today's video Thank you have a very nice day